Another way of defining the half-life of any unstable isotope is by using a concept known as the mean life. The mean life, which is given by the Greek letter tau, is equal to 1 divided by the decay constant alpha. Now the decay constant of any isotope is equal to the natural log of 2 divided by the half-life. So we can replace alpha, the decay constant, with natural log 2 2 divided by the half-life. And now we can bring the half-life to the top and we get the following ratio. So we see that the mean life tau is defined in terms of our half-life. So the half-life of that isotope divided by the natural log of 2. Now, using this definition of mean life, we see that we can replace the alpha term inside the two radioactive decay laws with tau, with the mean life. So recall that n is equal to n naught multiplied by e to the negative alpha times t, where n naught is simply the initial number of atoms that we begin with at some time t equals zero. And n is simply how many remaining unstable isotopes we have left over at some time t. So this is known as one of our radioactive decay laws and we see that the exponent contains an alpha. So we can replace the alpha with 1 divided by tau and we get the following equation. So if we call this equation 1, let's call this equation 2. Now we can also take the second radioactive decay law that basically gives us the activity or the rate of decay of our isotope. So the activity at some time t is given by this equation where r0 is the initial activity at some time 0. So basically we can replace alpha the decay constant with the mean life and we get the following result. Let's call this equation 3. So now that we define what the mean life is and we expressed our radioactive decay laws in terms of tau, in terms of mean life, let's take a look at the following example. So an isotope's activity decreased by a factor of 4 over a period of 10 days. So basically, knowing this information, we want to in part A calculate the mean life of this isotope, in part B find the half-life of this isotope, and in part C, if we begin with a sample of 100 grams, calculate what is left over of our unstable isotope after 20 days. So let's begin with part A. So since we know the ratio of our activities and we know the time interval, we can use equation 3. So let's take equation 3, rearrange it, and solve for tau. So let's bring r0 to the left side. So we get r divided by r0 is equal to e to the negative t divided by tau. Let's take the natural log of both sides. The e cancels out. Let's multiply both sides by negative 1 and then rearrange for tau and we get the following result. So the mean life is equal to negative of our time interval divided by the natural log of the ratio of our activities. Now we know the ratio of the final activity to the initial activity is 1 divided by 4 and the time interval is 10 days and if we solve this we get 7.21 days. So this value represents the mean life of this isotope. Now, in part B to calculate the half-life, we simply apply equation 1. So let's take equation 1. Since we know what tau is, we can rearrange and solve for the half-life. The half-life is equal to the product of natural log of 2 and our mean life of 7.21 days, and we get about 5 days. Finally, let's move on to part C. So notice we begin with an initial sample of 
100 grams and we want to find how much is left over, how much has not actually decayed in 20 days. Now notice if we take 20 days and divide that by 5 days, that gives us 4 half-lives. So that means we want to find how much is left over after 4 half-lives. Now, because a half-life simply represents half of the initial amount, if we begin with 100 grams after one half-life, that gives us 50 grams are left over. Now, after one more half-life, after two half-lives, we take half of this value, or 25. So after three half-lives, it's half of this, or 12.5, and after four, it's half of this, or 6.25. So we see that sometimes, in some cases, it's convenient to actually express the half-life of an isotope in terms of the mean life given by the Greek symbol tau.